Good morning, gang. It's, what is it? Wednesday. Wednesday, the 30th of November 2016. Good morning and very, very early in the morning we're recording today. Some of you are with us live. If you're looking at the clock now and it's just coming up to a quarter past one in the morning, you are indeed with us live. So uh, welcome along, boys and girls. And I've just been up to my mate's house, actually, uh, this evening. And uh, I got in, and on the way there, I thought, on the way back, I thought to myself, I must do a little live show tonight. Because we haven't done one of these late night ones for ages and ages, have we? Certainly not. As I walked back from his house, it's about, oh, it's about a 25-minute walk to his house. So I went there, I got up tonight, because of Tuesday nights, I'm off, which I'm loving. I'm going to keep my nights Tuesday as off, because it's very relaxing. So I got up after an afternoon sleep, around about half past seven, had some, uh, had some dinner. And, uh, oh, interestingly enough, I must tell you about this. Um, I, le I eat a lot of that corn stuff, right? Because I'm one of those strange vegetarian people. And I quite like corn. Now, you know I've got stomach troubles, okay? Which I've had now for about a year. And I looked up corn, just above a matter of interest. And it seems some people have a bit of a reaction to it. And I'm wondering now if it's anything to do with the corn. So I've got a couple of corn products now in my fridge. After we, I mean, I'll have nothing left to eat, will I? I'll have absolutely nothing left to eat eventually. So I've decided to kind of cut out the corn uh, once those couple of items have finished. And uh, we'll see how we go from that. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed that we might find the problem there. OK, let's say hello to a few people this morning. Good morning to Danny Davis. Morning, Danny. Uh, quite a few people up late, isn't there? I must say, good morning, Gustav. What's the number, darling? Just a minute, Gustav. You're rushing me, dear. You will be able to call in shortly, boys and girls, if you want to. Otherwise, you might like to sit, just sit there listening, listening to me wittering away, as always, boys and girls. Uh, good morning to Jerry Green. Hello, Jerry. Wendy's with us. Oh, nice to hear you're nice and safe and home, Wendy. Uh, Sarita. Hello, Sarita. You're with us live this morning as well. Lily, the lovely Lily's here. We've got uh, Brandon, young little Brandon. Bless his little heart. How are you? It's so long since we saw you, Brandon. We do wonder where you get to, dear. And uh, Ben Parker's with us this morning. Good morning, Ben. And that's it. Lovely. Anyway, yes. So on the subject of the corn stuff, I'm going to knock that on the head. Um, once those few products I've got in the uh, in the fridge and the freezer are finished, and see what happens. I, I just want to get to the get to the bottom of all this stomach business and all that. So uh, I walked up to Ronnie's house after I had something to eat. Uh, we watched a bit of television. Uh, him and his other half were there. Andy, who's not very well at the moment, bless his little heart. Oh, he's got a cold. He takes the mick. The, actually, the pair of them take the mick. Because, you see, they've both got BMWs, and they're so superior about it. You know the sort, don't you, I mean? You know the sort, I mean, they're so superior about, you know, having a BMW. How exciting is that? I've got a BMW, I've got a BMW. And, you know, when even when I got my new lovely car that I've got now, I've got a lovely Toyota RAV4, which uh, is my the, my favourite car I've ever had in my life. Even that, I said to Andy, I said, so do you like this better than the Yaris? He said, well, it's better than the Yaris, but, you know, I like my badges. OK, so get this. So get this. His car is in for a service. He has a BMW. I don't know. They're all numbers, aren't they? It might be a one. It might be a three. No, it's not a three. I don't know. I think he's got a BMW one. I might be wrong with that. Anyway, it's not even done 10,000 miles. It's taken it in for a service and they've kept it in now for two days, dear. Two days because they found water in the brake fluid. I think it's the brake fluid or is it the oil? No, Ronnie said it was the brake fluid. So they found water in the brake fluid, which is quite a serious thing, apparently. And it's although it's under guarantee, it would have cost £2,000 to repair. It's not even done 10,000 miles. Ah, that's how superior your car is, dear. You know, my Toyota, the only time I had trouble with my Toyota, uh, the Yaris, the last one I had, I had no trouble. Oh, yes, I did. I had the, um, oh, these bloody diesel particulate filters. There are not, they block up. They, they say they don't block up if you do a long journey on the motorway, but they damn well do because on both my last Yaris's, I've had diesel particulate blocking the filter, I don't know, I don't know what it is. And then you have to take it for a long run. That don't always, and then they, they take it into a garage. 
And the last time uh, was on the last car wreck, actually. It happened at about 50,000 miles. And they're like, well, we don't understand why this has happened. You go up and down the motorway every night. And they had to regenerate it twice or something. I don't know what they do. They do something in the garage and that fixed it. Anyway, I sold it. I got rid of it shortly after that anyway. Uh, but that's what happens with these diesel particulate fields. They, they're not very good at all. Um, but really, I haven't had much trouble on my Toyotas at all. In fact, my first Toyota that I ever had, which was one, two, three, four, five, about, by, about six years ago now, I got rid of it. So I had it, uh, first had it about 10 years ago. I'm, very, I'm a big fan of Toyota. They're very reliable. And that was the iGo. And I got to 160,000 miles on it before I had a problem. Fantastic. Very, very reliable. BMW, 10,000 miles. It's hand water in the brake. Oh, it's hilarious. I love it when something goes wrong like that. Although I wouldn't want him to die or anything like that in a terrible car crash. Don't get me wrong. So we watched a little bit of telly after that, uh, which was botched bodies. Have you seen that? My God, what people do to themselves. There were, uh, in particular, there was a lot about this, um, Dan, oh, what's her name now? That Westbrook girl. For some reason, I connect her to West. Is she married to Westlife, someone or other? Or is she the one that's married to that football? I can't remember now. Anyway, they had that Daniela um, West Westbrook. That's it. Daniela Westbrook on there. And she's had so much of that plastic surgery because, of course, she had a terrible drugs problem at one point, uh, cocaine, which apparently ruins the inside. You see that bit of my nose there, OK? Like you can see that's perfectly intact. That's because I've never done anything like that. I've never done uh, taken cocaine or coke, whatever you want to say. See, that's perfectly. Now, if they take loads of... Oh, I'm sorry to show you. It's hard. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Oh, reminds me of one of my exes. Look at that. <laughs> Was that a girl or a boy? I can't remember. I've done everyone. I've done cats as well. Cats, dogs, girls, boys. Done, I've been everywhere. Anyway, anyway, that bit apparently rots away if you do loads of drugs. And that happened to her. And she had to have it fixed. Now, I don't know how they fix it. Because I thought once it's gone, it's gone. Maybe they have a bit of metal in there or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, so... Uh, and uh, she, she, when she was addicted to drugs. Now, when she gave up the drugs, according to her on the television programme, I don't know if anyone else saw this, uh, she then became addicted to cosmetic surgery. Oh, yes. Oh, she's and she's had her breasts done. And they showed you uh, that she, they had to be redone or something because I think she'd had them done a couple of times and it was this little bit of skin there that she didn't like. Now, when I looked at it, when I looked at it and I thought, well, it don't look that bad to me. But of course, we see ourselves completely different, do we not, to what everyone else sees us. We absolutely do. Some of us, like me, I don't think I'm particularly attractive. Certainly not. You're probably looking at me and think, well, we agree with that, Chris. <laughs> but you know what I mean? We do see ourselves completely different. And I look at her. I looked at her. I like uh, uh, her a bit in the middle there. And I thought, well, that don't look too bad to me. What what had happened? She had a couple of operations there to make them bigger, I suppose, or lift them up or something. I could do that with myself, actually. As twice I've done that on two different shows, isn't it? And um, th this bit of skin here looks old, where I suppose it's been pushed together. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a blooming surgeon or anything like that. So it, it didn't... It, I mean, but I, I, I wouldn't have noticed it. You know, unless it was pointed at... Look at this. And, then, and even then... Had a, oh, isn't that ugly? No, it's not. It's OK. Looked all right to me. Anyway, she had another operation. And they sur showed you the surgeon with this. It was like a pen, not a knife. And it was going like that. And, and the skin was literally opening up on it. So I suppose it must have been a laser or something like that. And, um, <clears throat> and he pulled these old bits of um, uh, pl uh, plastic um, silicone out. And they were all covered in scar tissue. Oh, and it vile. That was bits of her coming out. I suppose when you push something inside your body like that, then over a period of time, your, your own skin will kind of wrap around it and all that, wouldn't it? Isn't that awful? Anyway, she had that done. And then she was having her teeth done because her teeth were all rotten. And, you know, she's, I don't know, she's 20 years younger than me. I, suppose. I think, was she about 35 or is she older than that? 
I don't know how old she is. I think she's about 20 years older. And all her teeth were rotten. And I said to my mate, I said, well, why is her teeth? Again, apparently due to the drugs, the cocaine. You know, I don't think people think about this when they're taking the bloody stuff. You know, if you've never touched it, then you've done well. Same as me. We haven't done anything like that. That's why I've still got my nose and my teeth. Now, my, my, my dentist, Mo, says I've got very, very good teeth, he said. Although I've got a bit of receding gums. But that's due to a bit of a blood condition that I've got. That That's what's causing that. And there's not much we can do about that. And uh, he says I've got very good teeth. Yeah, no false ones here. Look. No looseness. Nothing like that. Just a bit of receding gums. That's all. Uh, but her teeth were rotten, absolutely rotten. And again, she's done it to herself. So she was in this dentist's chair for five, five and a quarter hours. She was in this dentist chair. And um, he was like, he, he like put little metal things in there. Now, I thought, I thought he was putting these metal pegs in. And I thought he was, because it was, she was having um, like a, a, a tooth replaced. There was nothing being repaired. OK, so it's all false what's going in there. But it is like a, a permanent fixing rather than, you know, those ones that people take out. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure some of you had nans and mums and dads who had false teeth. I don't know they'd take them out and put them in the glass next to the bed. <laughs> oh, dear. Adam the plumber uh, won't mind me telling you that he's got false teeth. And he was telling me, actually, Sunday, he came to the karaoke in Sydney on Sunday. He was he's a, he's also a minister at a Lewisham spirit, spiritual church, spiritualist church. He's, a, he's actually a, a minister. And he was taking the service the other day. And he was I think he was singing uh, the first song or doing a reading and his teeth fell out. <laughs> in front of everyone, dear. How awful is that? Can you just, I mean, you just thought, I couldn't carry on after that. I would be so embarrassed. I really would be embarrassed if my teeth fell out like that. But that poor old dad, that happened to Adam on Sunday. No, well, these aren't like that. They are permanently fixed. Now, I thought, I thought he was going to have lots of little teeth and individually screw them in into each um, socket, I suppose. But uh, apparently her bones up there were very thin. Now, I don't know what if that's like just how she is or that was caused by the drugs as well. Thin bones. Thanks for your messages. I'll just come on to those in a minute, my darlings. All right. Don't worry about that. Um, uh, so it, the t it was like a set of teeth that were already made. And then he kind of had these little things like um, like screw sockets that he put into her bones and then he kind of fitted the thing up there and he screwed them in. It was like one of those um, hexagon, I don't know what they're called, Allen key. It was like an Allen key. <laughs> I mean, what, do you have to do them up now and again? Do they come loose? I've got a, I've got a bolt on my bike like that. That kid, There's a bolt on my bike at the back. What holds the bag? Because I've got bags on my bike. I like to go shopping on my bicycle. I've got two bags on the side. Panniers, I think, panniers. And a bag on the back there. And there's where, where it joins the wheel, there is, a, there is a, a, not a bolt, but a screw that always comes loose. And I don't know why. The other one doesn't come loose. Isn't that, str isn't that strange and mysterious? <laughs> strange and mysterious. It certainly is. And uh, this bolt keeps coming out for some reason. Every, every not, not like all the time, but sort of every six months, I'll, I'll notice a squeaking sound. And then I'll look and it's gone. I've, it's completely disappeared because it's fallen out somewhere. So it takes about six months and then I have to go and put another screw in. Anyway, back to that. So her teeth <clears throat> were screwed in. And I have to say, she looked fantastic afterwards. The teeth looked wonderful. Really did. But when you see what some of these people have done to themselves over the... And then it cuts to a picture of before they started. And they look lovely before they started. They really do. And then they start mucking about with themselves. Apparently, these implants, and you can have these implants in your breasts, in your bum, in your chest and all that. Apparently, <clears throat> you've got a, a reasonably good chance at some point of getting an infection. An antibiotic, did you know this, right? If you get an infection in some sort of implant, antibiotics do not clear it up. The simplest thing to do is have the thing removed. 
You have it removed. I don't know what they do. Maybe they clean it up and put it back in again or put a new one in or something like that. But um, uh, Katie Price was on there as well. And apparently when she went into the celebrity jungle and get me out of here, well, not all that business. I haven't watched that. But uh, eating those animals. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, it's vile. How can you do these Bush Tucker trials and put those things in your mouth, dear? Oh, no. Actually, there was an ad on there. There was an ad on there just before this program finished for that celebrity get me out of here, which was on tonight. And this bloke, very good looking, mixed race guy, um, drop dead gorgeous, about, about 30 years old. Do you know who that is? I don't know what he did. But all you saw was him standing on top of what looked like a crane. Just walking along this. And it was really high. Oh, no, thank you, dear. We don't do heights. No, thank you very much. Anyway, so Katie Price was on it as well. And uh, she's had various things. She, before she went into the jungle, she had been diagnosed with having a um, infection in one of her breasts around where this blooming insert was this this silicone thing was and the doctor on there said if you've got an infection in your implant wherever that is the last thing you want to do is delay going in to try and get it sorted out he said because it's so difficult to treat the best way to do it is actually to remove the thing and there's all sorts of dangers that are are, are go along with having implants and things like that you know, I can understand you wanting your teeth done. I can. But, you know, if, you, if, you, if your breasts are a little bit small or too large or your bum's not big enough, I don't think it's a good idea to have bits of plastic shoved in you. Presumably, when you go for these things, they tell you about these things. And then it showed this other bloke. I can't remember he was some, some gay bloke who wants to look like Kim Kardashian. What a st And he was sitting there, oh, I love myself. I really love how I look and all this business. And you were looking at him, you think, are you blind, mate? Are you actually blind? One of the things he had was this little roller thing. But, you know, if you had a pen like this and you would have, um, uh, that would do, like, like, a, like a microphone here. And it had little needles in it. And it was going up and down his face like this. He'd come out of the surgery, his face was all red. And they say that improves the skin, apparently. I wonder how much he paid for that. I mean, I would have gone round there for 20 quid and stuck little needles in all over his face. Oh, dear. But the best part of it, and he had no eyebrows. These things were drawn on. But the best thing about him was his lips. You've never seen lips like that. The lips were bigger than the mouth. <laughs> what do these people think they look like? Well, this is the thing. If you listen to him on the programme, he actually thinks he looks really good. His, um, his thing is to want to look like Kim Kardashian. I mean, you, you, there's no way you're going to look like Kim I don't even know what she looks like. I have no interest in, in this Kardashian business that a lot of the youngsters seem to like. I mean, what, what, what is the talent? What am I looking at there? What is the talent I'm trying to see on the Kim Kardashian? Is there such a thing, the Kim Kardashian show, I assume? Oh, I know that one, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, because Ron is Andy likes that. Ron is other half. Oh, he loves it, dear. And all it is, is a camera that follows them around, them rowing and getting off with each other. That's it. That's the plot. Well, there is no plot. That's it. What is the interest of Kim Kardashian? Anyway, this bloke. Wants to look like Kim Kardashian. I'm sorry, mate. She ain't got lips like that. They're <laughs> like this, these lips. And again, this lip enhancing stuff, that carries um, difficulties as well with it, in that if you put too much in, your lips will actually burst. Awful. My mate won't mind me telling you that he has had fillers in his face. He has these fillers in his face. <laughs> God's sake. <gasps> Oh, as you can see, I've had nothing done here and my lines are all here and they're all moving at the same time as my mouth moves, which is quite often as well. You know, let's do some of your messages uh, coming in this morning. Good morning to you, to you all there. Um, let's just drop down the list a little bit. Uh, bum, bum, bum. 
OK. Uh, Brandon says, my lungs have been giving me jip. I'll get some new ones, Brandon, dear. You can get, I'm sure you can get body parts now from China, dear. Although our Chinese people are a little bit smaller than us. So I, I, are the lungs smaller? I don't know. You'll have to speak to a doctor about that, Brandon. Uh, Terry, Terry H has got a BMW. Has he really? Well, I hope he, I hope he has much more luck than my, um, uh, than my mates have off. <laughs> Check your brake fluid, dear. Ben Parker says, my Yaris still hasn't done 28,000 miles yet. Oh, come on, Ben. Get, we'll get on with it. Are you turning that clock back, Ben? You're the sort that would have the clock turned back, I reckon. Yes, Yaris. Very, very reliable, Yaris. Uh, Gustav says, if you want to see a botched body, come and see me. Well, that's the thing, um, Gustav. I have seen you. And I do agree you have got, indeed, a botched body. Mainly on the facial area. Danny Davis wants to know when the mugs are coming out to your law viewers. I haven't decided what I'm doing yet, Danny. Hang on, mate. God's sake, I've just ordered stuff to buy for myself. That Amazon... This online ordering is deadly, isn't it? I'll come to that uh, as we go through the show today. Uh, ben Parker says she's 43. Ooh. Oh, Daniela Westbrook, she's 43. Oh, well, she's only 10 years younger than me, isn't she? But, um... Honestly, dreadful. Mary, Mary Warren. Good morning, Mary. Uh, says, chemo has the same effect on one's teeth and I don't have a problem with a bit of silicone in my body. Have you got some in there, Mary? Silicone in your body? Which end, dear? Which end? Because the other thing, there was someone on there who had had bum implants and it had gone, it was, it was flat. It had gone wrong. Because <laughs> I suppose this stuff moves around, doesn't it? Because they would take some pounding, wouldn't they? Those? No, no, I've got that wrong. That's not what I mean by that. Those bum implants would take some pounding because you're always sitting down. Before you get those dirty, disgusting thoughts out of your mind now, you're sitting down all the time. So I suppose, you know, if they were silicone, I mean, this stuff can break and leak. These people must be mad doing this, I tell you. Um, ben says, Mary, if you did, we'd have to call you a plastic paddy. <laughs> Oh, dear. Gustav says, look at Barry Manilow. What about Barry Manilow? I'm looking at him now. There's a post. There's two things. What about him? What are you saying, Gustav? What? Cosmetic surgery? Barry Manilow? I don't think so. Don't be cussing our Barry, darling. Oh, you don't know who's watching this live today, dear. You run in serious risk of injury if you start cussing Barry Manilow on this programme. Not just for me. But from a lot of others on here, Gustav, be very, very careful, dear. Good morning to Evangelina, uh, who says, that's impressive that your Yaris has done uh, so such short miles. Uh, my car is newer than yours, and she's done 46,556 miles. That's very accurate, Evangelina. Did you just go out and check your mileometer, especially for this program? A hundred marks to you, my darling. That's what we call dedication, boys and girls. No approximates here, dear. People are actually going out and checking their car to join in with the programme in fullness. Thank you, Evangelina, my darling. Yes. Uh, Pete Burns. Well, yes, the late Pete Burns. Now, of course, he died recently. Um, great big lips. And they just, But they, they do. They do think they look good. This is the thing. Um... John Dixon, hello, John, says it's shocking the way some people style themselves these days. What, you talked about my jacket? <laughs> or the people with their faces, dear. This shirt hasn't quite done it today, is it, really? I, I like the shirts with the little buttons. This hasn't got buttons to, to tie down the thing. This is a linen shirt. My, the lady who does my iron. Oh, I have an ironing lady. Yes, lady who does these. She hates ironing the linen. So I wear as many as possible. I want to get me money's worth, dear. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Gustav says, you could do with a nip and tuck. I don't think so, dear. We're not having a nip and tuck. You know, what's the point? Look, look, this is it. Look, there's the difference. What is the point in looking like an idiot? I mean, it's bad enough as it is, dear. Um, uh... Let's say. So, Alex. Good morning, Alex. Hello, Alex. Alex is with us live. Alex works with me at Central Station. Sometimes I don't often do these live shows now, Alex, because I'm working most of the time. But I've got a little night off tonight and I've just been up with mates out to watch some telly, as you just heard, the, the Botched Bodies programme. 
and um, uh, that's why I'm here chatting today. Uh, <laughs> I know what you mean, John. Yeah, I know you don't mean me. But yes, I mean, some of these faces look awful. Uh, Wendy, good morning, Wendy, says, Linen is dreadful to iron creases even as you're ironing. Do you want to be my ironing, Lady Wendy? I could send it all up in a box every couple of weeks or something like that, couldn't I, eh? <laughs> OK, lines are open. If you want to call in uh, on the show today, that's fine. I can take calls. Uh, feel free. Uh, the phone number is 020... 81443477. It's a local London number. You do not get charged excessive uh, rates or anything like that. It's just a local London number, okay? 020-8144-3477 is the phone number. If you're watching live, it's come up at the bottom of the screen. If you're not watching live, then there is no phone number to dial. Obviously, no one's going to answer because you're watching the recording, okay? But if it's like 20 to 2 in the morning now and uh, you want to call in, you can do so on that number. Someone's calling in right now, actually. Let's just... Uh... Oh, what have I done? Just done something wrong. There we are. Let's just take this call. Good morning. Who is on line 700 638? Good morning. It's Danny. Good morning, Danny Davis. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Now, you're in Leeds now, aren't you? Manchester. Manchester. Is that near, that, is that near Leeds? It's about an hour away. I mean, could you walk there, dear? No. Of it. course you could, if you left early enough, lovey. I think that, to look at some of your photos, lovey, I think the walk might do you good. Oh, Chris, how what? dare you? <laughs> oh, don't, dear. Um, according to my scowls downstairs, which are probably the more accurate ones, I'm 30, just a touch under, I've actually gone down a little bit, just a touch under 13 stone. But you know what, Danny? I don't think my weight changes that much anyway, and I'll tell you why. I've got these jeans and I can still do them up. I've I've been noticing that you've that you've um that your jeans are getting a little bit tighter when you've been seeing the um, the lives that you do in Central Station when you're up and down. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> when you're up and down on the stage is what I meant. Jeans looking tighter. Yes. I have two. I have several pairs. Okay, now two pairs are stretch jeans. They fit. I've also got another pair that are um, size. I think they're thirty-eight or thirty-six waist, and they do up, but everything hangs down. So that's what you're seeing. When I put the stretch ones on, they fit. They look tight, but they actually fit. They're just a little bit stretched. The other ones, the Ralph Lauren ones and all those ones, I can't wear, I hate wearing them because the arse almost is touching the floor. They just hang off me. And I've always had this problem with jeans. Well, not not always. When I got to 47, I started expanding. So what you find is that you can do the waist up. You either can do the waist up and everything else hangs down on the floor or you can't do the waist up and everything else first pit, first fit, first fits perfectly around my pert tight buttocks well i've lost a considerably lost i've lost a considerable amount of weight oh where have um, you done that darling say again sorry how have you done that then portion control Por oh yeah that's my problem you see portion control although i don't think i'm eating as much as i did now i've managed to i'm managing to keep off most of the chocolate and most of the crisps but i do like some now and again uh bread is one of the worst things you can have for weight I, I I have maybe one sandwich every three days, if that. Do, is that all you eat? One sandwich every three days? Oh, I think you're overdoing that diet, dear. <laughs> and then, obviously, a lot of exercise, because obviously walking around Manchester is, is quite, yeah. Yeah. quite big. What, what's your job now, Danny? Um, I'm doing radio, actually. Oh, really? Well, are you on t you're not on Tameside, are you? No, I'm not on Tameside. What are you on? Um, Gadio. Oh, Gadio. Oh, really? Have you got your own regular show on there? Um, I do the exchange in the evening, which is only goes out in Manchester. What is the ex What is that? It's a bit like your show, really. Um, it's news from a gay point of view, really. OK. Is that um, every night? Um, I don't... It's like a panellist, so there's different panellists each night. So I do, do you get two nights a month. Do you get paid for that or not? No, no. Oh, and no. then I do production of breakfast as well. So yeah, that's that's not unusual. Not getting paid to do radio work. 
It really isn't. The only people making money out of radio are the big name stars and those people that owns the blooming station. This is, I mean, it's one of the reasons I didn't bother, you know. I, I just, and of course, you've got so many restrictions, haven't you? Yeah. You know, whereas I, I could just come on and do anything I want to here. In fact, later on, I'm going to be stripping for you, boys and girls. Look Please at those don't. numbers go down. <laughs> Is that all you do then? Just that? Um, and I, <coughs> excuse me, and I do some um, customer service work in the day as well. Oh yes. What what what's that for? Um, it's for um, it's a woman's fashion label, but it's all online, so I don't speak to anybody. It's all online, it's all via email. So. Okay. Is that does that that's what pays the bills? Is it? That's what pays the bills. Yeah. What have you got? Your own place there, or what? Yes, I have. What have you got? A little flat. A little oh. flat, two bedroom. Oh, lovely. And may may I ask how much you pay? You rent it, do you? Yeah, I rent it. Five hundred and fifty a month. Five hundred and fifty pounds a month. That is now. Listen to those of you in London. Are you listening to this? Five hundred and fifty pounds a month. Two bedrooms, bathroom, living room. Bathroom, living room. Yeah. Have you got another toilet? No, just the one. One toilet. It's all on one level, is it? Yep. Garden. No garden. Oh, you up the first floor? It's city centre. Lovely. How many how many floors in the block? Uh, 22. 22, so you get your own place, 500. Now, let me tell you, one bedroom flats round here, you know I'm a landlord, one bedroom flat round here, about £750 a month. What, one bedroom flat, yeah? Yeah. London, seven, you, can, you can say goodbye to, you can say goodbye to seven, eight, nine hundred pound a month for a room in a house. You're joking. Eight, no, I'm not. There'll be someone watching this now, probably in London, who can who can give me a give me a price on that. Anyone who's watching, do do let us know that, okay? Uh, yeah, in London, you you can double that easily, easily. You certainly won't get a flat for that. No way in the world. But there Manchester, is no Man Manchester's the well, it is the it's the northern it's the northern capital, isn't it? Manchester. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just the exact yeah. what London is. Well, but in, in the north, in King's Cross. Um, where where Central Station is, um, there's a there's a, a, a estate agent just around the corner from the pub, and sometimes I walk around there. If I pop into Tesco's for a, for a bar of chocolate or something, and I walk back, and I always have a look in there, and there's stuff in there like five, six, seven hundred pound a week, a week. Oh. Who's got that? Seven hundred pound a week. Don't get me wrong, I love London to pieces. I've been there loads of times, mm. but I and I'd, I'd love to live there, but. The, the price really but yeah because obviously with Gadio I've been this especially this year I've been to Glasgow with them London Brighton um, we went over to Northern Ireland with them okay um, <coughs> excuse me so we've done I've been up and down this country you know quite a lot and does the station make mu make much money does it it, it it runs off advertising is it, um, is it? Does it tick over, or does it? Yeah, it tick make... over. Like one of our, one of the other big things that we're doing is we're going out to sea next year. Sorry, you're doing what? We're going out to, at sea. Out to we're sea. Doing, out to sea, yeah. What for? We're just taking the station on board a ship for. Ten oh right, days okay. And... Is it one of those Atlantis cruises? No, it's um, jetline cruise. Oh, I get like a pirate no, ship, dear. No like Norwegian, the old radio no, pirate ships. <laughs> no, we, Norwegian cruise line. <laughs> oh, it sounds very posh, dear. You're, you're, you're put on weight on one of those, my love. And all the drinks are included. Oh, well, I bet that's pleased you. Because you are known as a bit, little bit of a pisshead up there, aren't you, really? I, if you've seen my Facebook, <laughs> you, yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just have a look to see if anyone's plastered anything of it here about... Um, uh, Manchester. Uh, Wendy wants to know where in Manchester are you? What part? At Stra um, just outside Stratford. Right. Okay. It doesn't doesn't really mean anything to me. So there we are. Uh, Alex. Uh, he he's the one that works for me in Kings Cross. Uh, he says four hundred and fifty pounds. So four hundred. He pays. I think this is him. I think this is what he pays. Four hundred and fifty five pounds. Oh, oh no, it can't be him. He wouldn't have that money. He's just giving me a quote here. Four hundred and fifty five pounds a week. First floor, one bedroom flat, North London. That's a week, four hundred and fifty-five quid. So that's nearly what's that? That's that's that nineteen hundred pounds a month. Yeah, that's that's not even a week's wage. No, no. But obviously, the 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 wage in London is a lot higher than anywhere else. 
Oh no, that yet yeah, no, it's not. Don't don't fool yourself. No, it's not at all. Certainly not if you work in a bar. Those bar staff are on such low money. See, the thing is, years ago, if you got a job in a bar, generally you could get a room in there as well, and that was free. That's how it used to work, right? But gradually, the council started getting on to, oh, oh well, well, they should be paying this. And, and then the breweries stopped, started charging people rent and it all, it all kind of fell apart. But the wages of the barman didn't go up to compensate for this. I don't know how they survive, people working in bars. I really don't, because they're in such crap money. They really are. Let's see if any, anyone else has put anything here. Um... Oh, Brandon says, I love skinny jeans, but with your size, dear, you get a pair of straights and they will be skinny. I couldn't wear straights, Brandon. They're too, I'm, I'm, I am big round the waist, I'm telling you now. People don't believe me. Wendy wants to know how much weight have you lost, Danny? Um, two and a half stone. Two and a half stone. That is to be commended. A round of applause. If I Thank had you. an applause jingle here, I would play it, but I haven't, so I can't. But well, I can clap for the reason for my call is um, right. I know that you were very disappointed that Honey G has gone from the X Factor oh, this please week. Oh, do, please don't bring that up again. I but, just got over that, Danny. But I am um, in London on the 11th of December right. to watch the final. Honey, in, will she be on that? She'll be on that, yeah. <laughs> Honey G! Honey G! <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I'll... I'll I'm, if I get if I can get from Wembley early enough, then uh, I shall pop over to Sydenham and uh, come and see you and have a thing on your carriage. Oh, on the Sunday, yeah. Yeah, that's the Sunday because it's the final one, isn't it? So the final what? The, it's the final final show of the. Oh, of the, the X Factor, yeah, yeah. The Sydenham's not finishing, but yes, you're quite. Oh, I don't know when when the last one is, but uh, come along and sing us a song then, Danny. All right. Yes. Okay, dope. Nice to talk to you, sir. Thank you for and calling you... in. Say again, sorry. Thank you for calling in. Take care. Cheerio, Danny. Bye-bye bye now. Bye. Bye there bye. we are. That is to be commended, isn't it? Lo losing all that weight like that. Two and a half stone. I don't think I've, I've lost weight before. Not two and a half stone. That's brilliant. Brilliant. All right, let's do some messages. Going back to your messages again, boys and girls. Uh, Wendy says, well done, Danny. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Wendy was asking because she comes from Manchester. Don't know Stretford that well. I don't know where it is, dear. It sounds it's, it sounds quite a nice area. Do you think it's a nice area Danny lives, or is it a bit down market, dear? Could it be? I don't know. I don't know. Good morning to Crystal, who's with us this morning. Morning, Crystal. One of our lovely Manolo girls. Um, uh, just uh, clicking down here for you. Uh, John Dixon. Hello, John. Uh, says, nice to be able to tune in for once. Live. Yes, take care. We are live this morning. If it's 10 to 2 in the morning and it's Wednesday morning, the 30th of November 2011, 2016. Why did I go back five years? Because I was happier five years ago when I was young and pretty and I could pull anyone. But I can't now. What a shame. Um, Brown, uh, let me see. Evangelina says, only needs to take a walk down Camden High Street to see the different styles of clothing attire. Some people wear their... Oh, absolutely. And don't they all look fantastic? When I've worked in Camden, in particular, uh, the eagle. Was it the spread eagle? The golden eagle? The spread eagle? I think the spread eagle. The people we used to get in there and were really... Um, different styles and things like that. They look fantastic to have your own style like that. Um, Gustav, Gustav, you're being rude, dear. Mary's implants could take a pound in. What do you mean? Shut up. Awful person. Awful person. Uh, <laughs> Carl. Good morning, Carl. Carl's with us this morning. Morning to you, Carl. Nice to see you, sir. Lovely picture of yourself in that little suit earlier, I must say. And... Uh, there we are. Wendy, £35. Yes. Thank you, Wendy, for converting that for our American friends. Now, talking of fashion, that leads me nicely on to the subject of shoes. Now, I don't have them in here now. But uh, in the last couple of shows, two shows ago, we were talking about my shoes and my mate said they were really old fashioned because they were square at the front. Well, uh, Kiki D... White rightly sent me a little thing saying that square shoes, more square at the front, are coming back in fashion. However, <clears throat> I have 
just before I came on air to do, not on air online today to have a little bit of a chat it with you. I did have a look in my cupboard, and lo and behold, I found two pairs of shoes that I'd completely forgotten about. Now, I want you to tell me what you think. Here's pair one. Now these, now these, I think I bought from our mother's food wall. So that would be 16 years ago, over 16 years ago now. So these are those ones. What do you reckon on those? Okay, are these wearable now? Because I've kind of got these and I never wore them again. I thought that's a bit of a waste, isn't it, to have a good pair of shoes. Good shoes. Look, Roland Carter, dear. Look, Roland Carter. They are rather worn there. Roland Carter, thank you. But there's no holes in them. Nothing wrong with them. Are these okay? So let's set one, okay? Set one. Now, personally, I think these do actually look a bit old hat, those ones. But what do you think? Okay, so you can see those ones there, okay? Right? So that's set number one. Get ready to vote. Wendy reckons there's nothing wrong with those. Okay. So here is set two. Now these, to me, look much more fashionable. I think I bought these for <clears throat> my nephew's wedding. Check these out. Look. What do you reckon on those? They're nice, aren't they? Now, they're not even square at the front. They've got kind of a... I wonder what size they are. Because I've kind of... I'm kind of a size nine now. And I have... Although I have got... Uh, a, I've just ordered some, some train. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, I wonder if these still fit. Just a minute. I'm going to try and see. I've got my new socks on. Do you like those? Pink toe socks. Let's just try these on. No, they fit. Oh, they look nice, they do. Look, look. Do you like those? Look. I think they're quite nice. I'm going to go with set two. I think set two are the best ones on there. Yeah, I love those set two. So I don't think I need to buy any shoes. Shoes last for ages. <clears throat> if you're one of those people, Dan, Danny, I reckon you're one of those people that have just wear trainers all the time. But more recently, in the last couple of years, since I've been doing the karaoke nights, I've really sm I've, I've smartened myself up quite a lot. Because when I was just DJing, oh my God, I really looked like a tramp. So I would turn up to gigs in a pair of old tracksuit bottoms and a t-shirt with holes in it and old trainers. I just did not look after myself at all. But when doing karaoke, I think you're more on show and you've got to do so, which is why I bought the jackets. This is why I got all the old shirts out and why I bought a couple of pairs of shoes, which you've seen before, the green ones and the blue ones. Um, but I was going to buy some black ones as well because, I mean, I shouldn't listen to other people really because my mate said they look so old fashioned. But I found these and I think these are very, very acceptable, those ones, aren't they? They're nice. So you don't need to keep buying these things. And shoes last for years. And if you really want, you can get them repaired. Once that old heel goes there, you can get another one put on by the um, by the shoe man, Timpsons. We've got a Timpsons here in Bracknell. So, you know, if if you can, move over to shoes this, and they're more comfortable and you can take them off and sm on the smell when you've had your foot in a shoe. So much better than those smelly old trainers did. Which, you, which people pay 150, 160, 100. My nephew doesn't think anything of paying 170 pounds for a pair of trainers. Are you having a laugh? For a pair of trainers, dear, which will last, what, nine months, I suppose? Six months, nine months, maybe a year if you're lucky. Unless, of course, you're Chris Reardon. In which case, you wear them until they fall apart, my loves. I've got I've got a pair of swimming trunks downstairs. and <laughs> Not trunks, shorts. I can't wear trunks anymore. Please, will people of my age and my size stop squeezing into those bloody Speedos? What do you look like? For God's sake, chaps, come on, have a bit of dip. These women are not, do not want to, and we have, we have a few, we have, a, there's a couple of people in there, blokes about my age, who go to the, um, uh, to the Hilton uh, uh, swimming pool just up the road from me, which is where I go almost every morning. And um, they wear, honestly, they wear cycling shorts. And they're, they're over, a bit overweight, same as me. They're about my age. Maybe a bit younger, slightly younger, a little bit older maybe. But cycling shorts, what do you look like? 
have you any idea what you actually look like? And this is kind of going back to the whole thing, isn't it? Again, where we see each other different. We see ourselves differently to what other people see us, okay? I mean, we absolutely do. So do these people, <clears throat> do these people in Speedos and cycling shorts who are overweight, same as me, older, same as me, not necessarily old, but older, same as me, do they actually think that looks good? For God's sake, what do you look like? I mean, if there was any chance that I thought I might get a pull by buying a pair of those shorts and putting them on, believe me, I would do. But if anything, it would go the other way, wouldn't it? <laughs> Why is it you don't see the fit lads in these things? They always wear the baggy shorts, don't they? Very, very disappointing indeed. <laughs> anyway, so I don't think I need to buy any more shoes, do I? And that's it. That's the way it goes. Uh, Danny. Danny says I wear shoes to work and trainers at other times. Yeah, I, th I wear trainers kind of when I'm walking around town. Or certainly on my push bike doing shopping and stuff like that, OK? Uh, Crystal reckons set two are better. Yeah, I, I, I like these. I'm going to wear these tomorrow night. I'm going to wear these tomorrow night. Oh, Chris, oh, no, it's tonight, isn't it? Chris Riddle's big quiz night. Yes, it's a quiz night tonight, gang. If you're around the Islington in London area, Islington, London, it's Chris Riddle's big quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar. Uh, that's every Wednesday night from 8.30 until 10.30. Oh, that's the quiz night tonight. Uh, join us if you're there. Uh, Carl likes set two. I tell you what, Carl, for set two, when we're having our little Christmas dinner that we're having at Matt's big Christmas night out, that's in a couple of weeks, isn't it? Where's my calendar? When is that? Oh, it's in, uh, oh, it's a couple, oh, it's three weeks' time, isn't it? Choose one, two, three Tuesdays' time, that is, isn't it? Pizza Hut. We're going, we're all going to Pizza Hut. Now, these, this is Carl and uh, Matt and a few others. Well, I used to DJ at Heaven, uh, which is a big, Big, big nightclub in London. And um, they used to come there. And this is about 10 years ago now. And uh, we've kind of kept in contact. And we're all meeting up at Christmas 10 years down the line. So there, you know, when I, when, when I was there, I think I was four, yeah, I was 43 at the time I was there. And of course, all, the, all they were, all the young little things running around here. Well, they're all 10 years older now. And I cannot wait to see how much older they look. I really can't. After they sit there taking the mick out of me for looking so old. At 40, oh, I didn't look old at 43. It's only in the last two years it suddenly happened to boys and girls. I'm practically trapped. I leave the room and then I have to pick up body parts, come back in and pick up the body parts that have fallen off as I'm walking around the house. Uh, Brandon, Brandon knows Timpson. Do you like Brandon Timpsons? Do you like Timpsons, Brandon? I'm sure you do. You in there? Yes, probably. Dino, good morning, Dino. Dino's with us as well. Uh, Wendy says she prefers my blue and olive shoes. They are, they are nice, aren't they, Wendy, those blue and olive shoes. I was looking for a pair of, I, I don't know what other colours they, they haven't got, Ted Baker haven't got, they used to do lilac ones. Um, but they had a sale and they all went, I don't know if I lilac ones, they're a little bit, a little bit too puffy for me, I think. Dear, well, far too puffy. Lilac shoes, what do you reckon? Lilac? Oh, I don't know about that. Um... Carl is 30 now. Ah, yeah, but Carl, you are an advantage because you're black, right? And black does not show those lines. You have a big, big advantage over us old white pasty people, dear. White and pasty, look, white and pasty, lines show black like you, no lines. How lucky are you? When I went to St. Lucia, there was this bloke and he was, oh, he was selling this these bars of mud. And it, there's a lot of American people buying them. They were all conned into thinking if they put this mud on their face, they wouldn't look old. And, of course, he's black. And he's saying, how old do you think I am? So they're like, oh, 30, 38, maybe 39, 40, possibly. And he said he, he was like 60-something. He was like 64 or something. And like, wow. And, of course, as soon as they said that, uh, off they went and started buying all this mud. <laughs> But literally, it was just bling things of mud. I'm, I'm starting to look a bit yellow on here. Have you noticed that? Is it that light? <laughs> that, there's a light there making me look yellow, or is it my eyes? I'm not quite sure. Am I looking a bit yellow today? Hang on, let me just try something. Let's put that on there like that. That might reset the colour. No, I'm. Never mind. I think I look a bit better with a with a with. <laughs> it's, it's liver failure, actually. Liver. Fa oh, I shouldn't say something like that. Do you remember I went to I went to the doctors to have um. 
again to do with the stomach and she said I had an irritable bowel syndrome and they took some blood well they've made now she, she rung me the other day and they've made a quote routine appointment routine appointment so I said oh what's all that to do with then she said oh uh, nothing to worry about just a routine appointment I said oh did you get the test results back she said yes uh, so I said oh I just look yeah well most of them are okay I said, ah, oh, right. I said, is it is it anything to do with the kidneys? She said, oh, yeah, well, it might be. And I said, all oh, right, OK, well, my specialist is dealing with that, I said to her. But I'll come in and see you anyway, so I do know that. I do have a um, uh, little bit of a problem with the kidneys. They don't work quite well, as well as they should do. But we'll see what she's got to say on that day. Now, I was saying, uh, Crystal says, I don't look yellow. Oh, no, I think it's on the recording camera that I'm looking yellow, because it's two, two cameras. There's a live one and a recording one directly underneath it. And the recording one is making me look a bit yellow today. But I'm looking very white on the one up there. So isn't it interesting how this, how all this works? It really is. Uh, Brandon says, is it jaundice? No, I don't think it is jaundice. That's a liver filling, isn't it? Jaundice. Is that a liver failure type thing, jaundice? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, call in if you want to. Uh, if you've got Skype, you can Skype in, boys and girls. My Skype in is all one word. United Kingdom Talk, OK? The Skype in, United Kingdom Talk, all one word. Or you can phone in 020 8144 Now, we've had a, a lovely couple of days with my, my certainly my karaoke nights. Uh, we've had two really good nights, uh, Sunday and, of course, Monday for Ray Reynolds's birthday. And he rung me up, well, I rung him up today, um, and he's very, very, very happy with what everyone done <clears throat> for his birthday. Uh, we celebrated at Central Station and we had the cake and uh, you, I hope you saw the video of, of the night. It's yesterday's video. If you didn't see that, I won't tell you what happened, but when we presented him with the cake, just watch yesterday's video if you didn't see that. Now, if you're watching this via YouTube and you didn't see yesterday's video, then you can search for it on YouTube. All these shows also go on YouTube, okay? You can subscribe to YouTube, and then every time there's a new show, you'll get an email as long as you've set it up to do that. Uh, my YouTube is youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, all right? YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, or, of course, on the Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. But if you missed yesterday's video, simply go on YouTube and type in United Kingdom Talk, uh, Tuesday the 29th of November 2016 and it will come straight up all right so that's just to tell you where that is now while I was at work yesterday talking of um, shoes and things like that I did go and I did internet shopping internet shop this is while people are singing Wendy was sitting down the front I said I said I'll be with you in a minute I'm just doing some internet shopping because <laughs> it's so easy isn't it I mean, how, you could now go online and spend £10,000 in a matter of seconds. You absolutely could. And what it was, I knew there was a Ralph Lauren sale. And I had meant to order a pair of trainers, which were, third, I think, 30 or 40% off, which bought them down. Ralph Lauren trainers are expensive. I do not pay full price for designer labels. Never. Because it's far, far too expensive. But they were 30, 35, 40% off, somewhere, somewhere around there, which brought them down actually below the level, certainly below the level of the trainers that my nephew buys. You know, £120 for a pair of night trainers. I mean, do me a favour, for Christ's sake. It's a pair of trainers, dear. Oh, yeah, but they're fashionable, these ones. What, because they've just put another yellow stripe on the end? That makes them fashionable. What, for how long? Two weeks? And you've got to buy another one again? I don't think so, dear. Anyway, so these trainers were £45, which was really good. So I and the the sale was ending at midnight, so I had to do it last night. I'd meant to do it all day and I'd completely forgotten. But, of course, you know, I started looking around the blooming site then. And um, I ended up buying two pairs because one pair is for some, although the person I've bought them from, for, um, I've now found is it's going to be the wrong size. Uh, however, they're the size of me. So I, I order size, I, I get size nine shoes now. Um, I find them more comfortable. The eight fit, but I find a little bit more room in the size nine and they're not too big. So I do buy a size nine now. And I got a pair of um, blue canvas ones, blue. 
and another pair that looked like they actually look like shoes the black leather thing on top there um for those and i also spotted a nice belt which was kind of like stitched all around and that was again 40 percent off so i sat there last night and spent a load of money while i was at work i spent i spent more than the wages of the night dear and that is saying something and it is so easy wasn't it and today you know um i've bought something today but i i needed to buy these things i've bought batteries at amazon because they're so much cheaper if you can go out and buy a large packet of batteries on amazon and they send them to you uh, sometimes free of charge you, you you check that before you want to send them or if you've got that i don't know how many people have got that amazon prime thing have you got that you know where you get the videos and all that business isn't that the one that's um the uh the car programs on now what's it called top gear that they've got a different name for it now is that, isn't it are they on amazon or are they on M and netflix i can't remember now one of those two i don't have any subscription television at all i find enough i've got free set and it's all free don't pay for any subscription telly and all and i just don't think you need it there's so i've got a hard disk half full of stuff waiting to be watched and all that business you know um but uh, where was I with that then? Amazon, Amazon. Yes, uh, batteries. If you can order a load of batteries, say 20 or 30, and you'll, you'll always get three of them. I think on the Duracell ones, you've got like a two-year use-by date or something like that. Then do it on Amazon. You go down these little uh, corner shops and places like that, you get charged five or six quid for four AA batteries. Whereas I'll tell you how much on Amazon. Just a minute. There was a particular one. That there was a lot. You could Amazon, let's just, um, and it's so fantastic because you just buy them and um, a couple of days later they just arrive, you know, Amazon AAA, let's, is that the one, Amazon AAA, there, was, there we are, now look, you could buy 30, 30 Amazon A uh, Duracell AAA batteries, £7.69, that's 30 batteries, £7.69. Now, there's no way you'll get that in a shop. Uh, or or the, the more popular ones are the AA ones. I don't know if they've there's large quantities of those. The AA the AAA ones are these. Hang on, I've got one in here. I have. Look, there it is. That's the AAA one. Oh, actually, you, won't, you can't tell, with, can you? Unless I get a big one as well. I've got a big one as well. Oh, there we are. Look. In my... Is that a big one? No, they're small ones as well. I haven't got a big one here. But there's the AAA ones. They're the smaller ones. And the AA ones are slightly bigger and a little bit fatter. Um, perhaps they could, we could rename the AA ones the Chris Reardon batteries because they're fatter at the ends. And uh, again, oh, here we go. You can get 50, 50 AA batteries, £14.60 on Amazon. It's good, isn't it? There's no way you'll get anything. Generally, you'll pay a tenner for for eight batteries in the supermarket. Here, 50 of them, £14.60. So always check on Amazon if you want batteries like that. All right, boys and girls? And you'll save, save yourself quite a lot of money there. Um, uh, Danny says, show us the rest of the studio. Oh, not today, dear. I can't anyway, because I'd have to do it with both cameras. I can't hold two cameras at the same time, Danny. Honestly. Uh, Wendy says, your thrusts last night were hilarious. I, would, I did a little bit of thrusting, boys and girls, last night. Obviously not on this clean-based family television broadcast that I'm doing now. But in live situations, sometimes I push the line a little bit further. I do push the line a little bit further. All right? Uh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Oh, dear. Anyone else want to call in? Because we've been here an hour now. It's nearly time to go, boys and girls. 020-8144-3477 if you want a quick chat. 020-8144-3477. Or you can uh, Skype in as well. My Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. OK? Now, let's do some messages from yesterday's show. And then I'll do uh, today's birthdays, all right? Because it's bur every day. Every day is a birthday day. Every day is a birthday day. And uh, Ray Reynolds, indeed, writes in, uh, thank you, everyone, and Mr. Chris Reardon, your master of ceremonies, who used to be in that top male stripper ensemble, the Chipolatas. <laughs> male strippers. They don't do it for all those muscles. Oh, do, do you like that, ladies? Do you like muscles? 
Oh, I like a bit of definition, not those great big muscles. And like the, the vein that's... Go oh, it's horrible. Oh, no. Too many muscles, dear. Um, Wendy. Uh, thank you, Wendy. Now, I couldn't remember where I'd been to see Barry Manilow. I could only remember six times, but I knew I'd been eight times to see Barry Manilow, which is nothing, of course, compared to the lovely Anne T, who's been to see Barry Manilow over 220 times. That is, that is dedication. That is dedication. She's even got a little Barry Manilow shrine in her home. Yes. I wonder if anyone's got a shrine towards me in their homes. You know, someone's made like a 3D... Uh, like an image of me, or perhaps, you know, one of the things we could send off, I'm thinking about, the, what about Chris Reardon, Soap on the Ropes? Do you like the sound of that? Chris Reardon, Soap on the Ropes. You could have one of those attached to your uh, to your bathroom equipment, couldn't you? Uh, Wendy says, you've been to the O2 three times, and I remember now, because in 2014, of course, I bought Auntie Brenda and Auntie Rini, and they never stood up, did they? They sat down for the whole show when everyone else was dancing. Oh, God. But they said they had a good... I was worried they weren't enjoying it, but they did, of course. Not everyone, I suppose, likes to stand up and dance um, while they were at a concert. If you go to New York, uh, went to New York to see Barry Man, no one stood up there, only the English. I was up there with you girls. That's where I was, yes. Uh, so Wendy says, I've been to the O2 three times, 2011, 2014, and 2016. I've been to New York, Vegas, Florida, Wembley, and Cardiff. So, no, hang on, that's seven, isn't it? O2, da, 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 New York, da, Vegas, da, Florida, da, Wembley, da. Oh, no, it is eight times. And Cardiff, of course. So the, that Cardiff venue is a bit funny. It was a bit like a school hall. It's not the sort of place where I would expect someone with megastar status, which Barry Manilow has got. Even if you're not a fan, you must, you've got to be aware that Barry Manilow is, he's not a celebrity, dear. He's not a star. He is a, he's not a superstar. He is a megastar. Barry Manilow, dear. Yes. And uh, to see him on, a, like, what, what resembled a school hall. <laughs> In um in Cardiff was a bit off, uh, was a bit odd really. Uh, Kiki D said, please don't tell Fibs you have bought new shirts in the last two years. I know because you showed us all the three new ones you got recently, and you were wearing one when you showed us the square toed shoes. Was I? I? I know the rose shirt was a new one. What's the other ones then? Oh, of course, yes, yes, that little one with the little bits. Yes, yes, that's two. Uh, yeah, no, you're probably right. My mistake. Thank you for correcting me, Kiki We do like a bit of correction. Now and again, don't we? Yes. Uh, Simon says, true, Angie might not like me because uh, Simon's got something for Angie. He has got something something for Angie who sings at the karaoke nights and uh, he wants me to show her his picture to see if she... <laughs> I mean, perhaps we could produce a catalogue for people. Well, you've got that now with uh, Tinder and Grinder and all that business, haven't you? You just flick through and, you know, oh, it's just, it's not the same, is it, though? Flicking through an app to find someone, it's not really. Um, let's have a look. Simon says, on the subject of planes landing in your garden, because we're a little bit concerned about that. Planes landing in a garden because of the drone. Or people are selling drones. People keep buying these little drone things and they're flying over. And, and I'm sure one's going to get caught up and in the engine of a plane soon. And it may have to land in my garden. And he says, uh, landing in your garden, it won't be a Boeing 747. It will be a Boeing 747. Oh, not the jokes, please. And then, ah, Danny says, making the writing bigger on your computer is control and the mouse wheel. Is it? Wow, how fabulous I can read my things. I won't need the glasses anymore. Oh, Danny, how easy was that? Did you know you could do that? Did you? If you've got... I've got Windows 10. I don't know if it works with the others. But go on, try this now. If you've got a wheel on your mouse, I've got a wheel on here, OK? If you push the control button on your keyboard, right, and move the wheel up, 
or down, it increases or decreases the um the writing. Oh, how fantastic is that? I can see everything again. Thank you very much, Danny. You've just made my life so much more easier then, dear. You really have. Thank you very much as well. And Wendy says as well, you can also use control and plus, can you? Oh, where's the plus? Hang on. Oh, yes, so you so you can. How marvellous. How marvellous. Mark says, shouldn't be talking about planes landing in gardens after the awful news. What awful news? I haven't seen the news today. I haven't seen the news today, Mark. Don't know what you're talking about, my friend. Uh, so there we are. Mark was there as well last night, weren't you? Having a nice time. Incidentally, Adam, Adam is very happy now because for ages and ages I've been promising the old mirror ball for, this is a relatively new mirror ball. A little while ago, someone complained, boys and girls, that there were a couple of little mirrors missing. I mean, how can people notice this, dear? There were a couple of little mirrors missing out of the mirror ball. Well, I bought a new one, and the old one, Adam's been going on and on about having the old one. And last night, uh, or Monday night rather, I presented Adam with the old Mirable, the original Mirable Studio Mirable. Yes, and then there has only ever been one. That was the old one. This is the new one. There's only ever been one. So he now has the original Mirable from the Mirable Studio. Perhaps you want to buy it off him. You know, £10,000 should seal the deal. Get in touch with Adam the Plumber, or I can put you in touch with him, OK? Let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. No, there's a message here. Hello to Wizzo. Wizzo, who sends in an email and writes, Hi, Chris. Hope all is well with you. Watch the birthday cake presentation to Ray Reynolds on Monday on your Facebook page. Good fun at Central Station on Monday evening. You were clearly watching the um, uh, the uh, the live karaoke stream we did on Monday. Anyway, please surprise Ray by adding a happy birthday from Wizzo on your show tomorrow, which is today, 30th of November. Um, it also happens to be Trevor Pearson's birthday today. He lives in Islington and has threatened to come to the King's Head Theatre Bar one week. So you bring him down, bring him down. So please could you include him on the list too. So happy birthday, uh, Trevor, as well. I agree with what you say about the erection of Christmas decorations. No more than two weeks before the main event. And I would extend that to the playing of Christmas songs on the radio. I agree. Shouldn't have any Christmas things anywhere until two weeks before Christmas. Love Wizard, etc. But the classics should be held back and not played before the 14th of December. I totally agree. I totally agree. If someone wants to hear them, they can go to Asda. Yes. Oh, dear. Those that music in shops, dear. The exception is, of course, new releases. I have no problem in playing decent festive new releases, new releases from the 1st of December onwards with the emphasis on decent. decent. And that's from Wiz. Thank you very much, Wiz. Nice to hear from you, sir. And let us do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Here comes today's birthdays. Happy birthday today to, at the top of my list, of course, is Ray Reynolds. He's right at the top there, 69 years old today. Happy birthday, Ray. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I know you've already had your night. Maybe you're going out somewhere as well tonight. I don't know. Happy birthday, Ray. Happy birthday today to my cousin, to my, not cousin, to my nephew's wife, Stacey. Doesn't say your, your age yesterday. Happy birthday, Stacey. Have a lovely day. I'm sure the children will keep you very, very busy and looked after today. Maybe Harry and Evie can do all the cooking and what housework today. All right. Happy birthday, Stacey. Eloise, the lovely Eloise. Happy birthday, Eloise. Hope you have a nice day as well, darling. Rose Fowler from Hemel Hempstead. Happy birthday to you, Rose. I haven't seen you for a few years now. Hope you're doing well. And uh, love to your husband as well, my darling. Andrew Cranfield today is 40 years old. And Sarah Barrett is 38. Let's sing. <laughs> Happy birthday, happy birthday with you, to you. Have a lovely day, boys and girls, whenever you pick up this little video. And uh, good morning to Tom Harris, who's uh, in Chicago and has just joined us. As we finish, Tom, I'm afraid, it's time to disappear. I'm going to have a cup of tea and just to edit this and send it up and then go to bed. It's time for my Betty Bye Byes after my tea and perhaps even I might force myself to have, you know that tin I bought? 
Remember this tin? What you take the lid off and a message. Wishes and wishes you a happy Christmas. Ding dong, merrily on high. In heaven, the bells are ringing. Happy you can, Christmas you can, and opening the box. You can, you can record your own message, you see, on this. That did have biscuits in it. Unfortunately, I was tempted the other day and I had the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few left downstairs, which I shall enjoy with my cup of tea. Thank you very much for joining. It's an absolute pleasure to speak to you um, uh, on the show uh, tonight or, or indeed this morning if you're watching. OK, have a lovely day. Being Wednesday, do join us tonight. Tonight I'm hosting a quiz each and every Wednesday. That's at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington. Apart from that, if you're about to go to bed, good night, sweet dreams. Would you like a kiss? Good night. Would you? <laughs> Thank you.